let me get my screen together. All right, so welcome everybody. My name is Gerard Lockhart. Um, he, him, his, I'm with the mayor's office for people with disability. Uh, a physical description just to give space for people who may be calling in or uh, have a visual impairment for any reason. Uh, I'm African-American male. I'm in my office, I'm wearing glasses. Uh, a salt and pepper goatee, gray shirt, with my MOPD ID on. And behind me is a picture of the, night, the 2008 Beijing Olympics. And there was a blind, blind judo tournament. But health, happy to be here. So welcome to the MOPD One Summer Chicago. Uh, welcome. Uh, I want to just, before I even start on the last slide, I have a thank you slide. But I just want to say thank you again for everybody that participated last year and this year. We have over 36 different organizations who, are, who have offered to host our students. So I, for that, I just want to say thank you. If you have any questions um, and you can't wait to the end, just please post them to the chat. Uh, I didn't activate the Q&A option. Just post your questions in the chat. And our interns, Kim and Claire, they'll just chime in and, and interrupt anytime. I tend to do that if I have a question and I forget about it, I just type it in the chat and that's fine. So quick overview. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the goals of One Summer Chicago. I want to introduce you to uh, Ray Graham Training Center. That's where our students come from. Uh, also, I'm going to talk about login information and logistics. The meeting will be on Google Meet. And I don't have access to Google Meet, so I'm going to show a short video that describes how to use Google Meet, but it's part of CPS's format and they have to use that so that the administration and the principals can audit each class. So you may see a telephone number pop up or someone's face pop up, but that would be a guidance counselor or the principal or social worker. And then we could talk about presentation ideas. Um, we purchased a presentation software called Mentimeter where you can do word clouds or anything you want to do to make it interactive. So here's the bigger picture. This is the four prongs of our youth employment initiative. Our youth employment initiative where we work with transition age youth. And right now we're in the middle of one summer Chicago on the 14th, I think that might've been, was that Monday? It was the last day for submitting one summer Chicago applications. It may have, may have been the 11th, if I remember correctly. So that's our opportunity for over 30,000 youth to work over the summer. It's a six week program. And One Summer Chicago is part of that because we want to help proactively combat the unemployment rate, rate for working age individuals with disabilities. And so together with you from the public and private sector, we get together to expose the students to career, oper oper uh, career development, exploration and opportunities and internship. So we do this through One Summer Chicago, our transition fair, our job shadow day, um, which occurs, so wait, let me back up. Our transition fair happens in October and November in the fall. And we're hoping uh, that is uh, for old timers. We had this event at the South Shore Community Center on the South Side on um, South Shore Drive where we get over 800 students and we rent the entire facility. It's a beautiful uh, facility uh, that the Park District purchased where we have community agencies, universities and other organizations talk to students regarding the same thing as far as um, resume workshops, uh, career uh, workshops, transition fairs, and uh, community organizations when they get together with the different, different students. Uh, we do mock interviews, we have resume clinics, and financial literacy workshops. Then in the job shadow day, 
which was formerly called Groundhog Job Shadow Day, which happens in the spring, where, which is, this is a mini version, where the students will go in person to different organizations over a six week period. And they would visit the organizations. Uh, the, usually the organizations would cater lunch for the individuals or we can provide assistance where CPS schools, Office of Diverse Learners would invite different schools to come out to different organizations. Uh, for example, they would go to uh, the Anti-Cruelty Society and spend a half day there and tour the facility. They would go to PepsiCo and tour the facility. Of course, MOPD and all of our other organizations, uh, the Museum of Science and Industry would do, do a wonderful tour. So that happens in the fall. And our newly um, event that we just started two years ago included kindergarten through transition age. If you're not familiar with transition age, that's age 16 to 21 years old. But two weeks ago, we had a community expo fair where some of you guys may have prevent, uh, presented for your organization. We had over 50, 50 exhibitors and it was all remote where they uh, presented workshops for kindergarten through transition age where we had IEP clinics, as stands for Individualized Educational Plan Clinics. We had occupational therapists. We had individuals from the Division of Rehabilitation Services, the Illinois State Treasurer's Office. They talked about ABLE accounts and many more. So there's a bigger picture to this. And right now we're booking for One Summer Chicago and I appreciate the fact that you were able to uh, reserve a space. Okay, so One Summer Chicago connects people to summer jobs, internships, post-secondary education, career development, and job shadow experiences, which right now is gonna be virtual. And students will be connected to their computers at home. So it will be virtual because we didn't know how much things would be opened up. And last year we had five students. We asked for five to seven students and the mayor asked us to double the number of students. So now we have 10. And I just want to thank uh, CPS Office of Diverse Learners and um, support services to offer the students. And each of the students, they're going to have an opportunity to, to tour your organization virtually or find out uh, different careers uh, each student uh, may be involved with. Uh, we're also going to, through the six-week period, have the students involved in resume workshops, financial literacy. We're hiring two interns this year, so we're prepared. Last year, we had to scramble and I had to run it with another intern, but we're organized. And then we're gonna do a community service project that's called Chicago Youth Corps. And we allocated at least 60 hours, 56 hours to do that this summer. Last summer, our Youth Service Corps project was to help promote the disability complete count. We created uh, a create a which was an online event where we had uh, youth uh, help promote people with disabilities to complete the census. That was a big push to complete the census. And our students put on a presentation online about the census. Uh, they showed people how to complete the census online and they showed people how to create artistic content to Creative Commons to help people understand the importance of uh, completing the census. So Ray Graham Training Center, and if you can provide the link to Ray Graham, this is a school who is providing the students, our 10 students, so they've been vetted. These students are gonna be the most appropriate students for our program, we have two students who are, who are uh, returning. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, Ray Graham Training Center is a specialized instructional program that is designed to meet the unique educational, physical, and emotional needs. Our school provides a developmentally appropriate and cultural sensitive and community responsive education that assists our students in becoming productive members of society. And so for more information about the school, uh, and I'm gonna provide these slides to everybody, but there's a link to Ray Graham School so you can find out more about it. There's schools, specialized school across the city from the Northside Occupational 
Graham's prep to Southside Occupational Prep and to Ray Graham School. Let me just go back a couple of slides to make sure I mention everything that was on the screen, and I did. Okay. So log on logistics. So um, I provided some tutorials for log. We're going to use Google Meet, which I wasn't familiar with Google Meet until last summer. For the city of Chicago, we use primarily Zoom and Teams. But Google Meet is, uh, has been purchased by Chicago Public Schools and is part of the format that's going to be used. So everybody should have received an invite or email from shydisabilities at gmail.com. And if you have different presenters who will be speaking, uh, provide their email addresses to this account. So each speaker will be invited into the room for Google Meet. And once they get the invite, uh, that would be the link that they would use to enter the Google Meet environment. We would like every speaker to log on five minutes prior, prior to the presentation so we can get all of the technical issues in order. You will receive a reminder and a link with the information to log on to the presentation. And it may come into your, um, your calendar on Google. I, I created shy disabilities at Gmail account because it's easier to work with the Google Meet environment. Even people who work in the corporate sector just use their, you can just make up a Gmail account if you don't want to use your, your uh, personal Gmail account. Please send the slides in advance, one week in advance to shydisabilities at gmail.com. We have each student's research the presentations ahead of time as a pre-work assignment and that uh, be able to spark uh, questions that the students may have at the end of your presentation. And the reason why we use Google Meets is because this is a, an extended school year for CPS and we have to use their, uh, their format so that the school officials can audit um, each of our presentations to make sure we're not doing any harm. Otherwise, I would have had to have taken a TV test and you know, been onboarded by CPS. So this is the easiest way to do that. And if you have any questions about accessibility, we can provide a tip sheet on that. Uh, we just created that and we're learning about it each day when it comes to uh, making virtual meetings accessible. So I created a short video, uh, which hope, let me know if you can't hear it, but it provides a tutorial on how to use Google Meet. And I just want you to know that you will receive an invite from E.E. E. Makowski at cps.edu. And that is uh, the email you receive. So this person works for CPS Office of Diverse Learners Special uh, Support Services. And they, that person is going to allow us into the Google Meet environment. And so um, let's just look at this video. And you can use this as a reference when you get closer to your presentation time. While checking your email, you see an invitation to join a Google Meet. Okay, can you At first glance, you ask yourself, what is a Google Meet and why okay. did I receive the I invite? <laughs> Google Meet is a video chatting app that lets you virtually connect face to face when you can't meet in person. Some reasonable examples for why you received the invite could be for a job interview or to simply catch up with family or friends. In this video, we will walk you through how to join a meeting and show you the basics of a video call. In our example, we're using Chrome as our web browser, but you can use the one you're most comfortable with since Google Meet works with most web browsers. Once you've logged in using your Google account, click the link to the Google Meet from the email invitation. If it was a Google Calendar invite, click the event to see more information. Then click the Join with Google Meet button. Before entering the meeting, you can decide the settings you want to use. If you have haven't already approved the use of your microphone and camera, a couple browser pop-ups will occur. The first pop-up appears asking you to allow Google Meet to use your microphone and camera. Click Allow. Another pop-up appears asking you to allow notifications. Click Allow. You can choose to join the meeting with your microphone and camera on or off by clicking their icons. 
some people turn off their microphone to mute themselves when they're not talking or have too much background noise so that no one can hear them. Others keep their microphone on, but may turn off their camera so that no one can see them. You can make changes to these choices inside the video call too. Click Ask to Join. The meeting will open and you can carry out your video call. You'll notice your video tile as well as the video tiles of the people you are video chatting with on your screen. If at any point you need to turn on or off your microphone or camera, move your mouse to have the bottom toolbar appear on the screen. There, you can click on or off the icons for the microphone and camera. If you need to send a written message, click the message icon located at the top right of your screen. You can type your message in the field, then click the right arrow button to have it sent to anyone in your video chat. Click the X to close out of it. Looking at the bottom toolbar, click the three dots icon. A pop-up menu appears showing more features. Click Settings. Within Settings, you can make changes to your audio and video to make sure you have the correct equipment selected. Within audio, you can test your speakers to make sure they are working properly. The settings are helpful if you find yourself unable to hear who you're talking to or they say they can't hear or see you. Click the X to close out of it. When you're done with your video call, click the Leave Call icon. GCF Global. Create. Okay. I'm going to um, send that tutorial to everybody because uh, by the time your presentation comes, you may not remember it, how to use it. We're also going to send some more snapshots on how to use Google. I mean, if you want to look at the video or if you want to look at the screenshots on how to use this. And we can also go over this again if you log on at least five minutes before your presentation time, we'll show you how to present. So. In the past, we can advance the slides for you, or you can control the slides if you like. We can make you a co-presenter. Any way you like it, we can um, accommodate you because we're gonna have a team of uh, two interns to help facilitate the logistics when Google, for Google Meet. One thing I just wanted to add, this may be a little hard to see, but I have several Gmail accounts and emails so just make sure that when you join Google Meet that you use the same email that was sent on the invite because you may need to switch accounts to be admitted in the room. And so I get that a lot, especially when, I, uh, when I'm part of a CPS meeting and they use the Google Meet environment. I always get a, uh, a message saying, choose an account. And so, like I mentioned earlier, E.E. E. Makowski, at cps.edu will, will be the person you receive the email from. So you have to make sure you enter, you use your correct Gmail account. So we're more than halfway through the presentation. Um, did I miss any questions in the chat? I can't see the chat. I have two screens up. Nope, you haven't missed any questions yet. You're oh, okay, I keep going, thank you. Um, Gerard? Yes. Actually, this is Pat. Um, hey, Pat. My apologies. But uh, if uh, Pat Ryan, our presenter, uh, presents uh, through his uh, SPR email, is that fine? Uh, you seem to be focused on uh, Gmail accounts. No, it, it, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine because I know that um, Christina has used uh, outside accounts. I mean, she's used a City of Chicago account and Great. been able to enter the meeting. Okay. And, I, um, I just didn't know whether Pat has a Gmail, but uh, that's fine. Yes, yes. Sometimes it's easier. And um, other people like, like John Marshall, when you enter the uh, CPS meetings. Are you there? I want to put you on the spot. Yeah. Well, you're right. When I enter the CPS meetings, I have to use my phone. 
So I can't use my, you know, the account that I have for the agency because we're Microsoft Teams and we are not allowed in order to put any other type of um, of system on our on our computers. So that's why I have to go. So I literally have to the transfer send the email that you the invite that that is sent to me to my to my MSN account. So I'm going to be one of the ones that's going to have to have you know have that MSN account activated because I know I'm going to get the email of invite on my on my um, SSA.gov account. Okay, okay. You mean I'm, you mean Google account? Google. Because no, no. My when you send me the in, invite, mm-hmm. it's coming on the SSA.gov. Um, okay. Okay. So, it's so you send it to us. your MSN account? Yes. Okay. And it worked out last year. It worked out fine. Okay. So that was my issue, but that's how I do it. I just get in and, you know, and I just happen to have Google on the phone, but it's also an agency phone. And so okay. I'm in, yeah, so I'm able to be able to do all that stuff through the phone. Right. And you would just have me advance the slides like we did last year? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and one thing about the Google Meet, or you can use, you can call in also, if necessary. So, um, on this well, next- you know, that was one thing, Gerard. There was also another thing I wanted to potentially show a video of some of the, uh, you know, of some of the the positions. How would I be able to do that? That was that that's one of the questions I wanted to ask. Oh, you can. We've shown videos several times, and I'm, at the next couple of slides, I'll show you. You can send a video to me. I can show the video. Um, you know, if you have issues logging on to the Google environment, or mm-hmm. I can, um, or I can make you a co-host, or Aaron mm-hmm. will make you a co-host, and then you can share your screen. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as I show you, people have shown videos. We've had uh, like four or five presenters, like the Economic Awareness Council. They present, and they have students from all over. And they just kind of pop in and pop out and spotlight each other. And like person number, like, let's say if they're going to present from 11 to 12, somebody whose uh, time slot is at 11.45, they'll just turn on their screen and then they'll share their content and they'll start presenting. And then they'll hand it off to the next person who could be across the hall or across the state. So yeah, yeah, we can share. Uh, you can just send it to me in advance. That's why we asked for the materials at least a week in advance so we can share the screen or you can do it. We can work that out. Good questions, good questions. So on, on this screen, any more questions? So on this screen, I just have a tentative presentation schedule. We have 36 people booked so far. Uh, we have 16 slots remaining. And if you can see the different weeks are heavy uh like one the first week we're going to do onboarding we have spr msi i hate acronyms that's uh museum of science and industry they've been so great to uh every week they're going to do a presentation and then uh we have our commissioner one summer chicago banking orientation from the economic awareness council so it's a snapshot of the different organizations from different um career paths so just to summarize, we have individuals from zoology, aviation, uh, the Museum of Science and Industry. They cover a whole plethora of different scientific fields. Uh, so social security, government, self-advocacy, technology, uh, banking, hospitality, so we have the whole six weeks covered. So just thank you again for having the opportunity to do this. Let me go to the next slide. Uh, so, oh, I just wanna show you a snapshot of two years ago when it was in person. And this was similar to Job Shadow Day. Uh, so on the screen, there are like six photos and I go through over all of them. But I just wanna tell you the advantages and disadvantages of virtually. So first of all, virtually you do have challenges with technology and bandwidth issues. So sometimes if you have to share your learning space with other family members, we have the students or even 
presenters take uh, turn off their cameras if they can for unless it's, there's an accessibility issue. So uh, that's that. And it's kind of hard to establish presence. I understand when you're looking at 10 boxes. And in this case, it would be 12 boxes because we're going to have two staff members uh, run the program. But it's convenient because you don't have to worry about travel, traveling across the city <laughs> and dealing with traveling across the city and the whole logistics of struggling to make it from the students will have to sign in at City Hall and then hop on a train. One disadvantage is we lose travel training where the students get to have that experience and build camaraderie with each other and with the peer learners and the interns of traveling throughout the city. Every time we would go to the Willis Tower, which I still call it the Sears Tower, to visit SPR, we'll get rained on walking back because that was close enough to City Hall to walk back or even uh, PepsiCo. But other times, if you would go to Blue Cross Blue Shield, we would take the pink line which I discovered wasn't the blue line from City Hall. and We got lost one time to visit Kevin at uh, Rush. So it has its drawbacks. Uh, the first box is a visit in the upper left of, we went to visit uh, a tech company and we learned all about writing software. We talked to a lot of software developments and writing different software from the agricultural field and we learned how to code. The next box is a, we took a tour of the Chicago Greater Food Depository. We learned about the wonderful workshop. Oh, I see one of my favorite uh, colleagues and interns working, it was six of us at that tour uh, of the whole, how they packed meat products and food products and sent it out through various uh, food pantries across the city. The next box is a tour of the Hero Washington Library Center from Chicago Public Libraries. We visited, visited the Talking Book Center. Uh, we learned about assistive technology and everything that's to offer in that building. And on the 11th floor, this is open to the public, the garden room, they have wonderful exhibits, uh, like a museum exhibit. The next box in, box in the lower left-hand side has Pat, uh, you may have heard his voice in the background. Pat Mahar, you want to say hi? He uh, works for um, SPR, which is a tech firm. Um, uh, Pat, I, don't, I, don't, I know I won't be doing justice uh, describing your lobby, but we have each of our students sign up to our tech social media account platform called your lobby, where transition age students and adults can have a clearinghouse to look for jobs and employment opportunities and workshops. And we have everybody sign up for that. Uh, the next box image is a photo of Solstice, which is a tech term where we learned how to do coding and to um, a lot of cool uh, computer programming fields. And actually Solstice, they talked about the fact that even though they're a tech firm, they hire English majors they hire uh, teachers, they hire, hire people from a diverse field. So it's not just tech people. And the last uh, image is a box showing a presentation put on by ADA 25 Chicago. And this was at the Chicago Cultural Center. And this was an event hosted by ADA Chicago, which is uh, called, uh, Christina, what's the new name of ADA Chicago? 25 is disability first, I think. Disability. Disability lead. lead. Right. Lead, thank you. Disability lead. And so uh, we, this is a presentation on accessibility, which was in, done in conjunction with the Chicago Cultural Accessibility Consortium on how to make uh, museums and art exhibits accessible. So the students, they, they have a whole breadth of uh, different diverse learning experiences, in-person and virtual. So some Raj, tips. Yes. Would it be all right if I asked a question from the chat now? Please. 
Um, so somebody wants to know if for transition purposes, if the Division of Rehabilitation Services will be present during One Summer Chicago, I believe that's their question. And if this person would like to unmute and ask it differently, that's completely yeah. fine as well. Yeah, because you can sign up anytime. Uh, the link, link is provided in the well, chat. Actually, Gerard, this is Martha. I asked hey. that question. Hey, yeah, because I think what I find common in many of the youth is that they don't know about DRS. And if we're gathering them, I would think it'd be important to give them that because obviously they can go back to their school and try to figure out where their transition counselor is and, and get those services started. I mean, the transition from youth to adult services has always been an issue. And, you know- Absolutely, you're... absolutely. Because after the uh, IDA, Illinois um, Disability Educational Act expires and you become in that transition age, you need to self-advocate and have that knowledge. So uh, Martha, uh, if, yeah, if you can help to pass on a contact to me, I will send them the link so they can sign up. I think that's so important. I'm also- yeah, uh, I would encourage you. sending it to Ronnie Patrick, who's the- Ronnie? Ronnie, Ronnie Patrick, yeah, she's the division director. Ronnie she'll Patrick. Get it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, if you can um, pass along the email sure. to me, I would definitely- Yeah, because I, I have a tendency to ask them, do they know who their DRS counselor is? And they look at me like, huh? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, please okay. uh, forward Ronnie Patrick's contact and I will send it out. All right. Um, yeah, I, I just thought about it. Yeah, thanks for sending um, and Dwayne for sending me uh, AJ's link. And, uh, so they have a great stuff. Because I see John got at least four days in there. Oh. <laughs> for WIPA. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's no, not no, me. I mean, That's not all me. No, one is no, Eric. That's MOPD Jocelyn. too. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One is Eric and Jennifer. I'm just teasing, John. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, we want to keep the presentation no more than 45 minutes. I want to have questions. Uh, I said we have, you can work on icebreaker. Our students love um, icebreaker. Two truths, two truths and a lie, so don't use that one because we're going to use that one uh, at the beginning. But anything you want to use. Music, you can just call in from your phone. Um, there is a video. Someone had their phone and walked around in the store. Because one thing about Google Meet, uh, Google, and it works if you're uh, an iPhone also. You can use your phone and walk around and do it. One thing that we do with our students, because they've been online for like almost a year, we have them take breaks be a thought experiment. They can just walk away from, from their screen for five minutes and you can have them do an offline activity. Uh, they'll be at home, but think about that. I mean, that 45 minutes is going to go very fast. And um, if you look at mentimeter.com, uh, you can just borrow my account or you can give me any ideas if you want to use word clouds. And they have more than word clouds that we can work on with the students. And I asked anyone on here who worked last year, who presented to our students to do a share out. I just hop on and, and you can just uh, describe what you did. Uh, pictured above on the next screen is a zoologist from the Lincoln Park Zoo who did a photo journaling assignment and for her presentation. So there were two presenters at Lincoln Park Zoo in Lincoln Park and then they just handed off the presentation to someone who was at a Cook County Forest Reserve who turned on their camera and they were just in the middle of the Forest Reserve and they showed how they used a camera which was attached to a tree to observe the patterns of an endangered bird species. And they talked for uh, Dr. Kimberly Fake for like 15 minutes and then they handed it off to a different presenter. So, you know, you don't have to do an engaging, uh, it can be a talking head presentation also because the knowledge is so important also, but just any ideas you may have, uh, you know, we can work with you. 
And so this goes back to anybody else you think who's missing, they can book a presentation. Um, uh, Kim or, or Claire, if you can add the link to the chat and I'll follow up with the email. Uh, we can send this to Patrick, JJ's list, any other presenters who may wanna present, they can still present. Uh, the reason why we chose 11 to 12 and one to two is we need, our program runs from 10 to three. So they get an hour for lunch and then we need an hour before and afterwards. After each of your presentations, we have each student do a reflection, which is basically a survey at the end, uh, just to evaluate the presentation, what they learned, what they liked about it, and we give them a knowledge check. And that's pretty much it. Um, let me stop sharing my screen. And if anyone else wants to give their experience, wow, I get to see everybody. Hey. Oh, I see a lot of messages in the chat. Okay. Um, let me just share something on the, if I miss something on the chat. Okay, so Pat corrected me that your lobby is equal access. Your lobby is the format, but equal access is the version that provides career development uh, platform for any students and candidates with disabilities. It's on iOS and Android. Join. And uh, ahead, Gerard, my, my apologies, um, but Yolobe has now uh, lost one of the O's. So it's yolbe.com. And I provided that to the group. So thanks very much. Oh, no, 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 thank you, thank you. So does anyone have any questions about what we talked about or, I mean, you know, we can discuss it offline one-on-one -on -one also, but um, I think I, I, I'm, I'm happy that our RTA is here also. Uh, I'm at City Hall, so I, we used to have room 100 where they had a desk, but of course that's been closed for so long. And um, I know one of the projects we uh, we may have is to do a social story, which is a way to produce plain language for individuals with developmental disabilities on how to visit City Hall. But this year we're gonna miss travel training. And so uh, I know RTA may have some information they wanna to provide to that. Thank you, Kevin, for the, uh, in the chat, disabilitylead.org is a disability organization uh, that was formerly ADA Chicago 25. Thanks for sharing that. Oh yeah, and I missed uh, going to uh, Rush Medical University uh, to visit all of the different um, departments. I learned about EPIC, <laughs> EPIC, which is the uh, HRIS program for, for medical records. But if not, um, if no one else has any comments, I'm, I give you back 16 minutes of your time and please sign up and we look forward to hearing from you. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, okay, yes, thank you. Thank you, Candace. Uh, yeah, I look forward to working with you for, for RTA and uh, maybe you can chime in and talk to our students. And so, um, yes, I'll, I'll send everybody a slide, uh, the presentation and you can call me anytime. So have a great Brad, Yes. Okay, I, I just wanted to take an opportunity to introduce myself for the people who Please. I haven't gotten to meet yet. My name is Christina McGleam, and I'm uh, the new deputy commissioner here at MOPD overseeing this um, project and all the great work that Gerard's doing. I just want to thank you for your help and your commitment to this, um, this program. The kids always have a wonderful experience. Um, and I just wanted to thank you for your commitment. Thanks, Jack. Gerard, you're on mute. If you're speaking, you're on mute. Myself. Okay, so thank you. This is a thank you screen. This is everybody that participated last year. 
uh, for our Create-a-thon. We created content called Pixel. And on Pixel, we created this uh, cartoon of how your disability is your superpower. And so I'm on the left with the goatee and the glasses, but we had our different students, uh, our U Chicago intern, and we had a participant from the United States Census Disability, Disability Complete Count Committee, and three, two people from the, the Alliance, which is a, a disability autism, developmental disability alliance group, advocacy group that uh, help that uh, neurodiverse population. So thank you so much. And um, I'm just gonna chime off and contact me if you have any more questions. Thank you so much and uh, have a wonderful day. So we'll just end it now. Goodbye. <laughs>